Welcome to Academic Guru's Tutoring Tuesday, where we answer all of your high school, college, and university questions. If you would like your question to be featured on next week's Tutoring Tuesday, please submit your questions to questions at academicgurusinc.com. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay current with all of our new videos. The first common mistake is involving simple integration. One of the most common mistakes is with integral of just a number, say 2. So we're going to have integral 2dx, right? A lot of students want to apply the power rule of integration, which would be to add 1 to the existing power, so that would be 2 squared, and then put the new power for the denominator, and they would do 4 divided by 2, so they'll get 2 plus C. But that's the incorrect solution. I had around 10 students that made this mistake. What you need to think of when you see something like this is what are you taking the integral with respect to? Well, the x, right? But the problem comes in that there is no x here. What you need to do to complete this is just 2x plus c. You add the x because there was no x behind this 2 to begin with. So you couldn't do the power rule. All right? Our second common mistake is related to separable differential equations. So we have if dy over dx equals e to the power of 4x minus y, and we have y of 0 equals 5, what is a particular solution? All right. So one of the first things you have to do here is to break up your equation. So I'm going to break this up to dy over dx equals e to the power of 4x times e to the power of negative y. All right. Now I'm going to break this even more. So I'm going to have dy over dx equals to e to the power of 4x all over e to the power of positive y. All right. Because we have a negative y here. When we move it to the denominator, it becomes positive. Um, but anyways, then, then you have to do cross multiplying and then you have to take integral of both sides, but I'm not going to get to that. My point here is that a lot of students don't break up their equations correctly and they ultimately get the wrong answer because of that. So definitely work on this. The third common mistake is when we're using u substitution to integrate. Um, a lot of students mess up on this type of integration because they don't have an adequate knowledge from derivatives. So here, for example, we have integral of 2x times x squared plus 4, all raised to the power of 100 times dx. So I'm going to call whatever I have inside the parentheses to be u. So u is simply going to be equal to x squared plus 4. Now I'm going to take the derivative of u. So du equals, notice, derivative of x squared is just going to be 2x. Derivative of 4 is just going to be 0, so I'm not going to write it. And then we're going to tack on a dx next to this. Um, and this is where a lot of students mess up. Um, this is like a fairly, fairly easy example, but when you have complicated derivatives here, a lot of students don't find the correct derivative. So always remember to practice derivatives because they're found everywhere in calculus. And I think the trick for u substitution is you have to look for things that are derivative of each other. So here we have 2x and then we got 2x here, so that's a good indication that u substitution will work in this case. So now I'm going to plug back everything that I have. So it's going to be integral of u raised to the power of 100 times du. And from here, this is just going to be a basic integration. So I'm going to have u to the power of 101. The denominator is going to be my new power, so it's going to be 101, and then I'm going to have my constant, plus c. 
and then I'm going to replace it with x, so I'm going to have x squared plus 4 raised to the power of 101 all over 101 plus c for my integral or antiderivative. So there you have it for this problem, but always make sure that your derivative is correct. Our fourth common mistake is about exponential derivatives. So let's say, for example, we have um, f of x equals um, 5x raised to the power of um, 3x. Okay? And we have to find the derivative of that. Um, so we're going to have, let's see, we're going to have 5 raised to the power of 3x, we're just going to write the whole thing, and then we're going to take the derivative of the power, so derivative of 3x is simply going to be 3, and then that's going to be times ln of your base, and our base is going to be 5 in this case. So a lot of students didn't write this last part, and as a result of that, they got the wrong answer. Some derivatives like this one might seem like they're easy to solve, which they are, but they can get a bit tricky. So watch out for that. And finally, for our fifth common mistake, we have a very simple and basic derivative. I mean, it couldn't be simpler than that. So we have dy over dx of 4. I wrote this question for both of my calculus classes, and I was just shocked to see on how many people got the wrong answer. I mean, I was just flabbergasted because I initially wrote this question just to help everyone feel better and at least get one point on their exam. But it just blew my mind away. So here I've got some statistics. Um, so in my Calc 1 class, around 36% of my students didn't answer this problem correctly. And in my Calc 2 class, around 42% of my students weren't able to answer this question. So I guess when you spend so much time trying to learn the harder stuff, we forget to do the easy stuff. <clears throat> And again, a derivative of a number, whether it's going to be 4 or 4 billion, the derivative is always going to be 0. So this was very interesting for me, and I thought to share it with you guys. And as always, please comment, like, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated with our upcoming videos. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into our Tutoring Tuesday channel. If you enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. We would love to hear from you. Until next week's Tutoring Tuesday, happy studying.